Hi there, I'm Richard Harris at the Fund Forum 2015 in Hong Kong, and I'm delighted to be able to introduce Jerome Buvalda. Uh, Jerome is the advisory leader for Ernst & Young Wealth Management and Advisory Asia Pacific, and I have to say he's been causing quite a storm at the conference. So, Jerome, very pleased to have you with us. Thank you. Now, tell us, why have you been causing such a storm at the conference with your robo advisor idea? That's a good question. I think we might have to ask the audience that, Richard, but, uh, but look, I think, uh, Robo-advice is just a hot topic everywhere. It's uh, globally. We've seen some uh, some great disturbances in uh, in different parts of the world, and and, and people think it's going to change the industry fundamentally. Okay, robo-advisors, give us a definition. What's the elevator pitch? Good. Uh, look, a robo-advice is probably not what people immediately envision. It's not some kind of uh, robot as we envision a robot to be. It's more about using algorithms to solve problems for the end client uh, that will have specific needs and objectives specific assets and making sure that you come up with solutions to help them achieve those needs and objectives in the best possible way. So roughly you're a client, you're sitting at a computer, you put in maybe various inputs about yourself and you're looking at the system to try and give you some indications about where you're going in the future. Yeah, first of all what you should consider, you know, there's different ways to structure your assets, some more tax effective, others less tax effective. Uh, and there's different things you could invest in. Um, so uh, making sure that you you get um, the best allocation, the best portfolio, and the best um, setup to uh, to be able to achieve most of your financial objectives. But is there a best portfolio? Presumably, you have to have a human being at the back end, actually putting this in, or maybe looking at a series of situations and saying, in this situation, mm -hmm. this is the best solution. Of course, yeah. Now, look, that's where we uh, where we bring in uh, some really complex mathematics. Uh, We've got stochastic modeling uh, and, and a few other modeling that, that goes with fancy names that, uh, that you can use to, to run 10,000 market scenarios and, and figure out whether uh, certain strategies hold true uh, given different circumstances that clients might be faced with. But you, you talk about disruption, of course this is a big issue that we have with technology and disruption in the industry. Surely if you take away the financial advisor's idea, that's going to be enormously disruptive for an industry that's a very big industry. Yes, yes it is. And the financial planners and intermediaries, whether they're agents, private bankers or financial planners, uh, do play an incredibly important role in the industry. And, and, uh, and our view actually is that um, robo-advisors or, or algorithms uh, that optimize uh, on behalf of a client um, might not necessarily replace advisors. I think there's a big role for them to play to augment the advisor, make them more productive, more compliant, and more efficient. I suppose it could also be a benchmark against which clients can either match their advisor, or indeed the advisor can be matching his advice. That's right, that's right. I, look, I think one of the biggest problems for industry participants is to, uh, to ensure that advisors that might be geographically distributed across a large um, expense are um, are consistent in terms of the advice that they deliver to their clients. That's where algorithms and digital advice or robo advice uh, could play a big role to uh, to make sure that the boundaries, I guess, around the advice are being defined, still allowing the advisor discretion with the client, but making sure that there's a compliant and suitable outcome for the client at the end of the day. Now, looking at the asset managers, this isn't necessarily a threat to them because they'll still pro be providing their products. Uh, into the robot system, I guess. But the system actually could be a threat to them because it's going to start selecting, if you like, product providers, asset managers in a particular way. Yeah, yeah that's, that, it, I think it, it could be quite impactful. The time will tell. Uh, we're very early days in this uh, uh, with, with robot advisors generally. Uh, the philosophy here clearly is that uh, robot advisors will, will try to select much more consistency from a very large universe of possible product and investment ideas. And whilst advisors, because of their diversity, would probably pick quite a number of opportunities, robots, because of their consistency, will only pick a small number of opportunities to invest in. So it might lead to some rationalization in the, uh, in the industry, particularly around uh, manufacturing. Um, and what we've seen in the US is that uh, robos uh, have basically been set up also with a, with a big focus on passive investing rather than active investing. Because mm, people don't have to really make a big decision then about the inputs. It's more about exposure rather than the active management mm. that they focused on. Now, there's, gonna be, there's not going to be one robo 
There's going to be many and the kind of people setting up rovers, because you would imagine maybe some of the big asset management companies should be thinking of it, uh, yeah. or maybe some of the fun supermarkets, or indeed you could even have third parties who manage to raise a bit of money, set up a computer system, uh, and yeah. market it. Yeah, I actually think uh, that that even an exchange could be uh, could be setting up these things around um, you know their online mm. funds and everything else. Although perhaps even E and Y. Perhaps even E and Y. And as a matter of fact, we're working on some prototypes ourselves at the moment uh, to help our clients uh, transform their businesses. But you're absolutely right. Uh, the uh, uh, it, it is going to be uh, transformative, we believe, uh, but we don't think it's going to be a revolution. I think it's going to be an evolution. It's going to be a progress change over time, rather than us waking up tomorrow morning and suddenly robots knocking on our door uh, to uh, to give us advice. And are we likely, just finally, to see maybe one of the robots turning into a WhatsApp, the must-have application or desktop uh, application that? Um, uh, that everyone just uses. Yeah, look, I think there's a huge potential for robots to uh, to emulate the success that other digital players have had today. Digital really is all about re removing friction from the process, and uh, and if uh, robot advisors, uh, whether standalone or augmenting human advisors. Um, can remove friction from the process, that could be very popular indeed. And, mm. and uh, you could see uh, maybe the same enthusiasm that you see for Fitbits or, uh, or other uh, popular devices that have So a way of keeping our investment fit. Well, Joanne, thank you very much uh, for your time. I appreciate it. And best of luck with the ideas that come through.